I was just going to say, it's interesting because I think our society tells a lot of people to turn all that off. I know. Because if you think to one of your great examples is tsunami. You have a tsunami and all the water pulls up into the ocean. There's, you know, fish left. And all the animals know there's something really off. So they all go to high ground. It's only the human beings that will stay around and go, oh, look, you can walk out and get fish. Or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make dinner. You know, but they said when you had the tsunami coming, all the animals, if they could move, they could possibly move, got out of the air. Yes. And when you have an earthquake, it, they even had a thing, in, I think it was in Japan or something, but they said you can put a cage in a building's walls with rats in it or whatever, and they're perfectly happy to be in those, in those pathways. But you have it so it runs outside because if there's going to be an earthquake, all the rats will run out of the building wow. before it happens. You know, wow. People won't. That's interesting. They don't know it's going to happen, but but a lot of times animals, and I would think an Indian scout, such as you're talking about, would also, with this perspective, be aware of not only the you know the rhythm of the air and the earth and things like that, but also be aware of the animals and what what are the animals doing? And how does that all one thing, you know, the combination of things, the animals' reactions to certain things. They can tell when storms are coming. They can, and maybe if people are more open, they can tell those things too. But our society often says you only have so much attention. You have to pay attention, you know, to these things like, you know, how fast is your car going? Is there a cop around? You know, yeah. <laughs> things like that. And it takes your, your perception off. Uh, you, you can only spend so much. And isn't that a lie? I think that's a lie. Because we're all capable. Look at the capabilities that we all have. You know, isn't that kind of a lie saying, well, you can only do this much, whereas an Indian scout can prove no. <laughs> no, you can do all of this and also still be focused. Because they were also very, very, they had to be focused in order to um, perceive enemy tribes, in order to, and, and hunters had this to a certain degree too. They would have to be able to sneak up on an animal, which is not easy to do. Well, and part of it's, uh, in our society, I think you'd say this person has more common sense than that person. Because somebody can be so focused on their little tasks that they're doing that they don't realize that, you know, a fire has started over here. Right, right, <laughs> you know? right. But so, uh, yeah. Don't you think, um, let us know what you're talking about, about our focus and awareness here is um, we place so much judgment on things that it makes us worrisome, tense, um, stressed, muscle tension and everything, and that all cuts down on my perceptions. Yeah, muscle tension, boy, that's a good perception, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I also think it's because we don't listen. Because I find that if I'm open to stuff, I know when there's a cop on the freeway. It feels different. My husband does too. I, I am so out of it when it comes to cops. <coughs> You know, I just don't even pay attention to it, I guess. It's like and I, I suddenly have a feeling yeah. in a mall, can you put off the gas? Yeah, my and husband then if we is exactly back, like, up, there's a cop. But I think we all have that, it's listening to it. Well, and that's an interesting thing because it's not only these things, but when you have your characters, how much do they listen? Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're going to have, like, if you have an Indian scout, he would be very perceptive, whereas somebody else might not be. Right. Right, right. exactly. And you would have that that conflict or that yeah you know yeah, looking exactly. at the two characters and seeing the difference between them. exactly okay now before we get off the setting there's one other thing that I want to take up like I said there's so many different things story and setting is so different um, the the next thing that I wanted to talk about on as far as setting is time um, and place okay. Um, if you're writing a historical, you need to get as many pictures about that as possible so that you can have a visual image of what you're talking about. If you're writing a contemporary, it would very, very much behoove you, I think, to go to that place um, because setting is also a place and time. Um, I went to a battleground in Kansas that I had been talking about in one of my books <clears throat> and it was so interesting to go to that place. Now it was, you know, present time of course, and trying to envision what it was like then in the time that I was writing and 
the only way I know to get that particular um, sense of what that particular time and setting is like is to actually look at paintings of that time, look at pictures, anything that you can find of that time. Um, and if you can, go there, because there will be some things that don't change. You know, like in Kansas, there's going to be the wind. You know, there's going to be the smells of the grass in the air. There's going to be some things that don't change. The color of the dirt. Well, in most battlefields, you know, it's interesting, because sometimes you'll read a book, and it seems like the battlefield is entirely flat. And many battlefields are not flat. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, there's hills. It's, it's really different when you're trying to fight over this hilly thing with a storm <coughs> going through it. And That's true. It can be quite a shock. I, I got to see um, Gettysburg two years ago, and it was a total surprise what Gettysburg really looked like to what you see on in the documentaries and even in pictures. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised. Yes. It's a different feeling than I it's expected. Different feeling. Yeah. And, and of course, there won't be that feeling of it being haunted if you're writing about the battle that's about to begin. They won't have that haunted feel, which Gettysburg does have. I didn't feel that. Oh, you um, didn't? I didn't feel any any sort of oh. anything odd. Just the fact that <laughs> just the fact that it was an extremely emotional place, just because you know it happened. Okay. I I got haunted. And I went the day after they were having those reenactments, and you had all the people oh. walking around in their uniform, and a lot of the men in the southern outfits were at monuments crying. And placing lots of flowers and wreaths at the monuments, um, the southerners were, and that was kind of a surprise. I mean, the northerners weren't, but the southerners were. You know, the people in the uh, Confederate uniforms. Okay. And so that was emotional. Yeah. But I didn't. Huh? Um, go ahead. But I didn't feel anything extra. I mean. Well, I but that might be because so many people were there now with their emotions. In the in the you know what I'm saying? They had all of their emotions there. So that's what you were feeling, was what was going on right then. Whereas True. if you go in February and nobody's there, it's a totally different... And people's perception of these things is all going to be different. Yeah. You know, that's why I think, you know, you, whenever an accident happens, it's well known, you, you ask seven people who saw that, you kind of get seven different versions of the story. You know, people have, you know, they don't perceive things in the exact same way. Thank goodness we're not all alike. <laughs> That's interesting, though, because cops will separate with witnesses and talk to them all separately because you'll have one person that'll swear the guy was five foot ten and the other guy will say, no, he's six foot two. And yeah. Because that is how they perceived it for some reason. Well, so it's also based on how tall you are. Because I'll tell you right now, Brenda, how tall are you? Five four. She sees the world in a totally different way than I do at 5'11". And who she thinks is tall, I think is average. Because at five, I'm the shortest person in my family. So 5'11", to me, is not tall, but to most of the world it is. You know, I had a book about a tall woman who was war class passion. I had a lot of fun with that. Because her perceptions were different. And other people's perceptions about her were different. It was, it was a fun book to write because it was there was a different perspective on things. Yeah, if you went back to England and they had the bee feeders that were all much taller than the average person or something like that, I guess it was very Yeah. Why? Is there different? And then there's gonna be the feel, particularly of a historical, um, of a like an age that maybe things were a little slower paced, you know, as opposed to a contemporary where it might be 